All right, there are two techniques uh, for probability. Uh, one, one's called a tree diagram and one's called an area model that we use. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the area model first here. So uh, I went on the internet, found a couple of statistics here. First of all, did you know that 15% of Americans are left-handed? And also 63% are Caucasian. So what I've done here is I've broken this into a table where we have handedness as one variable and race as the other. We have people that are right-handed put an R here, we have people that are left-handed, we have people that are Caucasian, and we have people that are not. Okay. Also, we can figure out probabilities from this. Uh, right-handed, well, 15% are left-handed, so I'm going to go and put 0.15 right here. So what percent would have to be right-handed? Well, 100 minus 15 is 85, so that'd be a 0.85 if we write it as a decimal. So these two numbers here should have to be 1. Likewise, 63% are considered Caucasian. And, uh, well, if we take 100 minus 63, we get 37, so 0.37 are not Caucasian. So from this here, we're going to go ahead and fill out the table. And, and basically, here's how it works. Each different part of this, each little rectangle, all you do is you multiply the probabilities for each. So for instance, this is the, the spot for people that are right-handed and Caucasian. So right-handers is 0.85, Caucasian is 0.63, and if you multiply these two together, you get 0.5355. So what that tells you is of all Americans, about 50, 54% uh, of people are right-handed and Caucasian. If we move over here to this table, uh, to this spot, excuse me, or we would take left-handers as 0.15, multiply by the percentage of Caucasians, and when you do that, you would get 0 0.0945. So that tells you once again that of all Americans, about 9% are Caucasian and left-handed. You can do the same thing down here. Uh, you take 0.85, because that's the percentage of right-handers, times 0.37, the percentage of people that are not Caucasian. When you multiply that, you get 0.3145. And then, finally, we would take 0.15 times 0.37, and when you do that, you get 0.0555. And so, all of these numbers here, and I'm talking the four answers inside. So, one answer, another answer, this answer over here, and this one over here. This should add up to be one. So, if you add up all four of these here that I just circled, you should get one because you should have to be 100%. And um, you can look at this way. What's the chance that, uh, you know, somebody is left-handed? You can look at it as both here. Uh, what's the chance that somebody is both right-handed and Caucasian here. What's the chance if you're neither right-handed nor Caucasian? Well, that's over here. So it allows you to look at these here. So here's the limitation of this. This is something where it doesn't matter whether or not you're Caucasian or not, you're still a 15% chance of being left-handed and 85% chance of being right-handed. So what if we were to change it now? So here's some, some more statistics for you. 19% of U.S. adults smoke. 25% of smokers develop lung cancer, while only 1% of non-smokers do. So the problem here is that the rate of getting cancer is different for whether or not you smoke or you don't smoke. So you can't do a table like this over here, one of these area models here. You have to do what we call a tree diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and, and categorize people as either smoking or not. So I'm going to write smoke or not. And what we know from that is we know that 19% of people smoke. Therefore, 81% of people do not smoke. So that's our first part of our tree is, do you smoke or do you not smoke? Next up, if you get cancer, we have cancer right here. And we have either or you're not going to get cancer if you're a smoker. And it tells you that if you're a smoker, 25% of smokers develop lung cancer. So I'm going to put 0.25 here. Therefore, what's the chance of not developing cancer if you're a smoker? Well, 100 minus 25 is 75, so that'd be 0.75. You can do the exact same thing here for non-smokers. So we have cancer, we have not getting cancer, and those percentages would be, let's see, 1% of people would get cancer, that's 0.01. People that are non-smokers, that is, 1% chance of getting cancer, and a 99% chance of not getting lung cancer if you're a non-smoker. Then what you do is you take each tree limb, so 0.19 times 0.25, so I'm going to write that over there, 0.19 times 0.25, and you multiply them together. And when you do that, you get 0.0475. Likewise here, 0.19 times 0.75. 
and when you multiply these together you get 0.1425. Same thing here, you take 0.81 times 0.01, that's these two branches, branch, branch, and when you multiply that you get 0.0081, and finally if you take 0.81 times 0.99 you would get 0.8 019. So it, it tells you information whether or not it's an area model or tree diagram it, it breaks things up here so you can see each each of the four things that can possibly happen however a tree diagram you have to use when you have different rates depending on whether or not in this case you smoke or you don't smoke. We're here it doesn't matter if you're a Caucasian or not you still have the same chance of being right-handed or left-handed and um, you know once again if you look at the tree diagram here this is the chance of if you if we randomly selected someone and they didn't smoke what's the chance of that person having can getting developing lung cancer this would be the chance or this would be you know if we pick somebody at random what's the chance they smoke and get lung cancer well that's that's the chance of that there all right so that's how those two uh, methods work enjoy